Jeopardy! Maestro Ken Jennings has unleashed his snarky side on Wednesday's episode when a contestant made a far-fetched guess, calling it a classic expression. The final round of the Champions Wild Card Tournament kicked off with Henry Bear, Nell Klugman, and Roan Talsma facing off. In double jeopardy, Roan aimed for the $1,200 clue in the category Ben Franklin's Dringer's Dictionary. Ken, 49, read, he sees these, Ben probably didn't mean Walter Payton and Dick Butkus. Roan guessed, ah, uh, what are quarterbacks? Ken promptly dismissed him, quipping, no, sorry, and muttered under his breath, that classic expression, he sees quarterbacks. Explaining the correct answer was Bears, the Chicago NFL team the two footballers played for, Ken said, he sees Bears. That's a term for a drunk person, I guess. The host added, seemingly remorseful given the clue was an antiquated phrase, blame it on Ben Franklin. Throwing up his hands. Roan, unamused, redirected by saying, let's move away from that one. Heading into final jeopardy, Roan had $10,600. Nell had $12,400, and Henry had $8,000. The A Bit of Britain clue read, in disarray, it was sold at auction in 1915 to a local Wiltshire man, who would donate it to the British government three years later. No one correctly guessed Stonehenge, and Nell lost a significant amount while Henry made a modest wager. Ecstatic, Henry went from a close third to the winner with $5,399, securing a spot in the semifinals. The tournament is still going? Champions Wild Card features past players from Season 37 or Season 38 getting a second shot at glory. As Season 40 faced retools due to Hollywood strikes, Jeopardy! Enthusiasts have expressed mixed feelings about the prolonged tournament on Instagram. One fan wrote, can't be the only one that thinks it's ridiculous we are getting all these tournaments just to be followed by a tournament of champions. Another commented, can we get back to regular Jeopardy now? And a third questioned, when do the regular games return? The tournament fatigue was evident, with one fan exclaiming, the tournament is still going? The ongoing tournament began in late September, with fans expressing surprise at its duration. While some questioned the continuous tournaments, others looked forward to the 2023 Tournament of Champions season starting on December 19. Despite the tournament's extended run, anticipation surrounds future events like the Second Chance Tournament, for last year's most snubbed non-winners, Champions Wildcard for last year's best brief winners, and then, the actual Tournament of Champions. Then there will be the Jeopardy Invitational Tournament, which will populate the next hotly anticipated Jeopardy. Masters. Executives revealed that regular gameplay would resume in April 2024 with 16 weeks of non-tournament play this season. Reigning champion Lucas Partridge and potentially Mayim Bialik, whose return remains uncertain, will be back after nearly a year off. Ken Jennings walked onto the set of Jeopardy, with his usual blend of charm and wit, ready to guide yet another episode of the divisive Champions Wildcard Tournament. The air was thick with anticipation as the best of the best, those who had already conquered the Jeopardy arena once before, now returned to face off in a battle of wits and knowledge. But there was a growing sense of unease among viewers. The Champions Wild Card Tournament had been marketed as the ultimate showdown, a test of not only knowledge but strategy, nerves, and experience. However, the format's new twists, wild cards, and sudden death rounds had sparked controversy. As Ken took his place behind the podium, he could sense the tension in the room. The three contestants, all champions in their own right, wore determined expressions. They had fought hard to get here, and now they were one step closer to glory or humiliation. The first round began smoothly enough, with the familiar ping of the buzzer signaling correct answers and the contestants racking up points. Ken moved effortlessly from category to category, his quick quips and light-hearted banter keeping the mood light despite the high stakes. And then it happened. The category was historic battles, and the clue was, this 1815 battle marked the final defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte. All three contestants quickly buzzed in, but it was Matthew, a former college professor and one of the more formidable competitors, who won the race. With a confident grin, he gave his answer. What is the Battle of Trafalgar? 
Ken's eyes widened slightly, a subtle indication that something was amiss. The correct answer was what is the Battle of Waterloo, but instead of a gentle correction, Ken leaned into his microphone, his voice dripping with playful sarcasm. Well, that's one way to lose your Napoleon privileges. The studio audience erupted into laughter, but the joke hit harder than usual. Matthew's face flushed, his earlier confidence evaporating in an instant. It was a small moment, but one that would reverberate far beyond the walls of the studio. Social media lit up almost immediately, with fans either loving or loathing Ken's quick wit. Some praised him for keeping the show lively, pointing out that Matthew was a seasoned contestant who should have known better. Others, however, felt Ken's remark was a little too sharp, especially given the high-pressure environment of the Champions Wild Card Tournament. But the show must go on, and on it went. The rounds continued, and while Matthew struggled to regain his composure, the other two contestants capitalized on the opportunity. Ken remained unflappable, his jovial demeanor unwavering despite the undercurrent of tension that had seeped into the competition. As the final jeopardy, Round approached, the leaderboard showed a clear division. Matthew was trailing, his earlier mistake seemingly haunting his every move. The other two champions were neck and neck, setting the stage for a dramatic conclusion. The final jeopardy category was literary landmarks, and the clue read, This English village, home to a famous author, inspired the setting for one of his most beloved novels. The contestants scribbled furiously as the iconic jeopardy, Fame played, each one hoping that their knowledge, and their wagers, would be enough to carry them to victory. The answers were revealed one by one. The first contestant, a librarian named Sarah, had written, What is Hayworth? Ken nodded, and with a smile, confirmed it was correct. Her wager put her just ahead of her closest competitor. The second contestant, James, had also answered correctly but had wagered conservatively. He fell just short of overtaking Sarah, making her the de facto leader. Finally, it was Matthew's turn. He had been aggressive in his wager, knowing that he needed a big win to compensate for his earlier blunder. But as his answer was revealed, a collective gasp rippled through the audience. He had written, What is Stratford upon Avon? Ken paused, his face a mask of professionalism, but there was a twinkle in his eye. Oh, Matthew, he said with a mock sigh, you know, you might have been thinking of Shakespeare, but we were actually looking for what is Hayworth, home to the Bronte sisters.